All right, Malachi, thank you. Today we are learning all about the healing powers of dance. Yeah, this is really neat stuff. And last week, a group of dancers with Parkinson's disease won So You Think You Can Dance at the Chapman Cultural Center. And here to tell us more about that is Lisa Cox. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. First of all, congratulations to that troop. Are you a part of it? I am. We have um, been participating in So You Think You Can Dance, which is a community-wide dance event that Spartanburg has been hosting for the last three years. Uh -huh. or It's every other year because this was our third so, performance. So what was the dance that won it? What did y'all do? Well, it was an, a dance that was choreographed by Carlos Aguadello, who's the artistic director for Ballet Spartanburg. And oh, wow. he, he is one of the dan um, dance instructors that we have on a weekly basis. And the dance was to a uh, Appalachian waltz played by one of our team members' sons uh, on the cello. Wow. And it had some theme of not only the music, but uh, uh, quilting and so forth, things oh, that are wow. indigenous oh, to our wow. area. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Ben and I have both done dance competitions. We know how <laughs> difficult those can be. It and is. then when you add Parkinson's disease to it, but you guys were extraordinary. So tell us about how that works. Well, if you don't know what Parkinson's disease is, it's a movement disorder, and so it causes rigidity, slowness of movement, tremor, like I have right now. Many people don't think that they can dance with Parkinson's disease, but it's showing that you're doing the very thing you think you can't do. They might be afraid that they might fall or something like that, but it really helps with your balance, yes. apparently. It helps with reciprocal movement mm -hmm. and balance, but then also, more importantly, the emotional and um, spiritual aspects of dance. Yeah. And social as well. Yeah, That's and creating a community, being a part, contributing yeah. to a dance. Because you guys practice for a really long time, and so there, there is that community bond there. Yes, well, as I said, we've done this now for, this is our third win, and it's helped to create an opportunity for classes to be offered free to the, to the Spartanburg County community. Wow. And so it's something that's been important to us. Take us back a little bit further, and how did you sort of uh, discover the, the benefits of dance with your Parkinson's? How did, how did you figure that all out? Well, I really have to give the credit to Carlos Aguadello. He, back in 2007, read of the Mark Morse Dance Theater up in New York, New York City, and there was a gentleman named David Leventhal who, as a just pilot project, wanted to test and study dance with people with movement disorders. And that has now turned into a, not only a national program, but an international presence. And yeah. what have they found out? Have they found that dance and music and that constant movement really helps slow down the disease in any way? It doesn't help slow down the disease, but I think it helps you to live well with the disease. Yeah. And it's, um, as we know, music is movement. And so music, and they're learning much about music in the brain and how you, they correspond and work together. And so when you're dancing, it can help you not only, as I said, be a part, but it can take you to another place. Yeah. It, can, it can elevate your and, and uplift you in your thoughts, attitudes, and action. Mm -hmm. and, and it has to do with the rhythm in the songs and things like that, that and, and what it does to, to your brain yes, as well, yes, I was reading it makes, a little bit. And it makes a neural connection. Wow. Yes. yes. It's fascinating. You've heard that before with children learning to play. They often yeah. say that learning to play piano or, or being musical, that helps make neural connections. Mm -hmm. Well, you see that even in middle or old, older age. Wow. It would, I mean, and it would sort of go understandably to, to make your mind think that, you know, that really could lead to just um, at least better health and living with the disease. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. if folks want to get involved or get a family member involved, I know it's better to dance with a lot of people because yeah. you get the social aspect of it. Yeah. Uh, do you have a group? We do. We actually, we had it earlier today. We meet on Fridays at the Chapman Cultural Center from 10 to 11 in the Ballet Spartanburg Studios. Okay. And as I said, our, our victory allowed us to raise over almost $16,000 that helps to provide the program for free. How I know people that? are going to want to Google this. The name of the group? Well, it's Parkinson's Dance. You don't have to have, that's another thing, you don't have to have Parkinson's to participate. Okay. Because anyone who um, wants to work on their mobility or work on their balance is welcome. Okay, right. so they can probably contact the Chapman Cultural Center for more information and they can and, get you connected. And Ballet Spartanburg. Okay. Right. Lisa Cox, thanks Thank so much you. for joining Thank us. You. Appreciate, Thank you very it. Much. appreciate it. I appreciate it. You're watching Carolina's Family at Four. We'll be right back.